Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to culture microworms. Now, microworms are a food that I'm relatively new to. I didn't really experiment with it in the past and I've only been playing with it recently in the past like month. And basically, in today's video, I'm gonna teach you guys everything you need to know on how to culture these guys because you're gonna get them like in a little parcel. So you guys can buy these down below. They'll be in my store or if you're overseas or something like that. You can pretty much just buy them anywhere on eBay and stuff like that. They're pretty cheap. You'll get like a little starter culture and then basically I'm gonna teach you guys what to do with that starter culture to grow these guys and get them to multiply and stuff like that because these guys are really, really good for feeding to fry because they're tiny itty bitty little worms and fry absolutely love them. They're pretty nutritious and they're a really good filler food between feedings and stuff like that. So they're a really useful food and I really have enjoyed feeding them. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here is my culture of microworms and if you look on the side of this little container, there's lots of like little particles and lines and all that kind of stuff. And those are actually little, little tiny worms. Now, basically what these are, they're literally just little tiny worms. They're an awesome live food to feed to fry because you've kind of always got a supply of these guys ready. And basically, if you guys don't want to like feed the same food all the time and you want to get like a varied diet, these are really good to pat out a diet and to feed to your fry. Now, you can also feed these to guppies and stuff like that. They go really, really good with guppies and lots of like little rainbow fish fry and tetra and stuff like that they're really really beneficial for now there are some limits they're not like a completely good food there is some issues with feeding this too much now feeding this like all the time if you only fed your fry this could cause deformities so some problems with the fins and stuff like that have been known to happen I personally don't have that problem happen but it can happen to a lot of people so it's just something to be wary of normally what I like to do is feed all my fish baby brine shrimp and then in between feedings because I can only feed baby brine shrimp like once or twice a day in between that I like to feed this and I also like to feed like hikari first bites and stuff like that to a lot of my fry. So this works really, really well. I've only been playing with it for a little amount of time, but it's been really, really fun. So basically what you're gonna get is you're gonna get like a little sleeve and it'll be like a little like plastic bag or something and it'll just have some of this bottom stuff in here. So basically at the bottom of this is just our like kind of base for these guys to feed on and use to like grow on. What this is in mine is just oatmeal. Now I've seen a lot of people using stuff like powdered mashed potatoes and all that kind of stuff. And personally, I just like to use oatmeal. I think it does stink a little bit more than powdered mashed potatoes but I already have it in the cupboard like my family eats it and stuff like that so it's like kind of not worth me buying something else just to make a culture so you'll get like some of this stuff and then basically it'll come like in a little ziploc bag and then I'm going to show you what you have to do to culture these guys but first let's feed it to our fry okay so basically what you're going to do is you're going to have like a container like what I've got here and then what's going to happen is all the worms once the culture actually matures are going to start to go up the side of the like container or glass and plastic whatever you've got and they're going to go on the side and basically what we can then do is literally take your finger run it along the side pick up all the worms on your finger or you can use like a q-tip or something like that if you're grossed out by it it's not that gross and then you literally just dip your finger into the aquarium and your fish are eating literally just get your finger put her in the aquarium or like whatever then we have tons and tons of little tiny itty bitty worms swimming around that the fish can eat and as you can see there's just heaps and heaps of these little worms and they basically fall to the bottom and they can survive in the aquarium for days at a time. So basically they're just gonna sit down the bottom and provide like a constant source that our fry can eat and it's really, really helpful for feeding and making sure that our fry are full all the time. So down the bottom of this box, we've got a bunch of angelfish fry and some epistogramma fry there and basically all of these little tiny worms which are super hard to pick up on the camera, basically all full down to the bottom and then these guys just start to go crazy on them. Okay, so now you guys know how these guys work and you guys know how to feed them, but how do we culture them? Well, I'm just gonna show you right now. Okay, so basically this is not hard to make at all. All you're gonna need is literally like some kind of container now. Basically the container, you're gonna want it to be like a little bit taller than shorter because these guys, you don't really want them to like climb up and get out and all that kind of stuff. It can be really, really messy. Then as well with the container, you're also gonna wanna like cut a hole in the lid or you can poke holes in the lid or whatever you wanna do. But by cutting a hole in the lid, it works a little bit better because basically we need holes in the lid because we need oxygen to be able to get in here. Otherwise these guys will just slowly suffocate and die. Well, the reason I cut like a big hole is because I love to shove some of this wool in here. So this is just like filter wool. I love to shove this in here and you'll see a lot of other people on YouTube doing this. And basically what this does is it allows it to breathe but it stops like fruit flies and stuff getting in there which can be really, really gross and they will also stuff up your culture. So that's literally all you wanna do for the lid and the container. Then another little thing that I like to do is every time I make a new culture, I like to write the date on the lid. So today's, put that on the top, 
You're gonna to wanna to set up and do one of these about every two to three weeks. And that's because eventually over time, the balance of worms and waste and all that kind of stuff and all the nutrients and all that becomes out of balance and then we have a crash. So that's why we always wanna be setting up new cultures and taking down old ones. And basically another little tip that you can hear a lot is trying to give someone else your culture just like for free. So give like another person with aquariums some of your micro worms because if yours ever like crash and die, you always know you can go to that other person and get your culture started again. So basically, it's super easy to start this culture. All you're gonna wanna do is literally get some of this like, this is just like oatmeal, it's like breakfast food. Just put this in the container. You want like a half an inch layer or like three centimeters of this stuff. And then you're gonna get some boiling water. Pour that in there like you're making it for breakfast, literally. And then you're just gonna let that soak in there and let that sit until it cools down. You're gonna wanna mix it up and all that kind of stuff. So you're not gonna want this to be like crazy wet. You kinda want it to be like a bit gluggy. And basically what a lot of people say is just like, if you can turn it and it stays, then that's perfect. You don't want it to be like overly moist. Otherwise the culture doesn't work as well as it should. So what we got here is like a kind of perfect consistency now. So we've literally just made like a bit of breakfast, but instead we're gonna chuck a bunch of little tiny worms in it. We'll just flatten this out and we'll leave it until it's like room temperature because otherwise, if we add the worms now, we'll just kill them and burn them. I'm just gonna leave it like that. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes now and this is cooled down. It's not hot at all. It's definitely like not room temperature, but it's just warm and that's okay because it's very, very cold out in my area right now. So all we're gonna do is take from our previous culture, which you can see here is really runny now. It previously looked like this, but they've broken it all down and eaten it and reproduced. So this is absolutely teeming with them. There's so many of them in here. And basically, literally all we're gonna do is just take a big dollop of this. And we're just gonna put it in here. I'm just gonna smear it around, spread it around. And that is our culture ready to go. This will take about two weeks now until it's gonna be like looking like that. And basically what these guys are gonna do, they're gonna start eating up all those sugars inside of there, use them to like reproduce, and then they're just gonna start doing the exact same as what was happening in here. So it's literally that easy. You're gonna wanna do this every two weeks because then you'll always have a constant source of microworms to feed to your fish. So then you're just gonna put your lid on your new culture. You don't wanna let it freeze, but you wanna keep it at about room temperature. So like anywhere from I'd say 16 degrees Celsius all the way up to 30 degrees Celsius is gonna be okay. So that's just pretty much room temperature. If you guys are in the state, I think that's like 60 to 80 degrees is pretty good for it. And then you're literally gonna take a new culture and just, that is literally it. It is that easy to set up one of these cultures and trust me, they are a really, really good food to like pad out a diet. So I like to feed heaps of brine shrimp and then I like to feed heaps of hikari first bites. But in between doing that, I like to feed these microworms just to give them an extra bit of protein and to keep their stomachs full. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one.